So that was a brief introduction to some of the modeling fundamentals. Let's now transition to this, an example of an industry application of model-based system engineering with SysML. And for that, we're going to use this 30-meter telescope uh, project. That's TMT for short. So what is the 30-meter telescope? It's an international collaborative effort involving many different nations, including the U.S. and Canada, Japan, China, and India. And they are developing this new ground-based telescope. It's very, very large. It's part of a family of what they call extremely large telescopes. It uses 492 segmented mirrors uh, to, to get the mirror diameter. The idea of having a single mirror that's 90 plus feet in diameter is and getting the precision, you can't do that with a single mirror. So what you have to do is create a segmented mirror and build the mirror up from these different segments. And then control each of the individual segments to give you the equivalent of a single mirror, of a cohesive single mirror. So that's one of the real critical technologies in these very extremely large telescopes. The TMT project has been working on finalizing the site location. They were originally targeting Hawaii. They came up with some environmental concerns. They're looking at La Palma, which I think is uh, near Spain. Uh, so that's still underway, the, the, the finalization of that site location. But meanwhile, they continue work on the design and development of the uh, telescope. And in particular, they're looking at cost reduction activities. So I'm going to come back to that in a moment. Uh, the Jet Propulsion Lab, or JPL, is responsible for the design of two of the major subsystems, the uh, APS, which is the Alignment and Phasing System, and the M1 Control System. And in particular, they're applying an executable model-based systems engineering method, or ESEM for short. And I have just a couple of slides that just illustrate uh, this, this application, just to give you a feel for uh, a real world application. So if you look at this telescope and you look at the, this primary mirror, that's what's, what you're looking at here. Um, and again, there's 400 plus segments in that primary mirror. What they're looking at is a a change to, to reduce the diameter from 30 meters down to 25 meters. So that red circle is the, the, the reduced diameter mirror that they're looking at. And in order to do that, you know, what they would do is reduce the number of segments. Uh, and they'd probably eliminate about 100 segments and therefore reduce the cost and complexity of this scope. But of course, they'll give up, I'm sure, some performance. And uh, again, this, just to give you a sense of scale, this mirror is 90 feet in diameter. So third of a football field is very big. And um, the APS system, which I'm going to elaborate on, the alignment and phasing system is this box here. And I think it's about eight or 10 feet uh, in, in width. So it's also a big piece of hardware and, and software. So what they're looking at is a change impact scenario, and this is one area where they leverage the model, which I'll, I'll come back to in a moment. But uh, if you look at this change, we're going to reduce this diameter. We're going to remove some of these uh, segments. We first have to redesign the M1 control system. In other words, the control system that controls the primary mirror. Uh, we have to, uh, in addition, uh, look at the and redesign of the optomechanics of the alignment and phasing system, as well as the image algorithms for that system. Uh, there's correction modules. There's uh, these dummy masses that are used to uh, balance the mass uh, on, the, on the telescope. They will have to be 
reevaluated and, and, and updated. There is a redesign of, the, of this wavefront sensor on the instrument <clears throat> and redesign of this iris, this pupil mask. And, and, and finally, there's even redesign of the optical uh, cleaning system. So there's a lot of redesign that takes place. And this just identifies sort of the initial uh, areas that need to be investigated to determine how they would be impacted by this change. So let's, we're going to take a look at the alignment and phasing system. I just want to say a few words about what it is. So it's a primary subsystem of the 30 meter telescope and basically it's used to to align the primary mirror segments and such that, that they perform as a singular, coherent, spherical mirror. The functions that it performs is it collects the image, it analyzes the image, it then determines corrections, and then it sends commands to the M1 control system that in turn actually controls the segment alignment. So that's the function that APS performs. Uh, so this alignment and phasing system, if you look at some of the specification and des architecture design artifacts for this uh, APS, you'll see starting with the project requirements, those are brought into the system model. And there's one requirement there that's highlighted. I won't read what it says. It's too small here, but it talks about the alignment. Uh, it's an alignment requirement, and it has to, the alignment has to be performed within a certain amount of time. And you see an activity diagram, so this shows the functional behavior that's associated with that requirement. So this functions have to change, or potentially have to change, in response to this change in this alignment requirement. And this function decomposes into other activity activities which are shown here. There's two of them shown just to illustrate the point. And then you see a, uh, a block diagram showing the interconnection between the various parts of the alignment and phasing system. In this case, highlighted are the camera and the software. So those are two of the many parts that that constitute the alignment and phasing system. And the camera has a state machine, and that state machine in various states performs certain behaviors, and those behaviors are defined by those activities. And similarly, you can see that the software has its state machine, and in certain states, it performs certain behavior, which are also defined by these activities. The particular methodology that, uh, that ES this ESEM, or Executable System Engineering Method, uses defines exactly what you, uh, which artifact you create and when and how. But this just illustrates the fact, some, some representative artifacts that are used when you create a system model. And you see here the requirements, you see here the behavior, you see here what we call the structural elements, which is this block diagram. And all of them are connected together. There are many other elements that are not shown here. For example, verification cases and parametric analysis and things of that sort. But this gives, just illustrates one example. So what were the benefits that uh, have been realized to date in using this model-based approach on the TMT project? Well, first, they found they had a much better understanding of behavior of the as-designed system early in the life cycle. They really didn't have that visibility in previous goes. They just didn't have this behavioral type representation. So that, that provided a lot of benefit. They had the ability to do the early and ongoing verification through analysis. What I referred to early, earlier as virtual integration, they absolutely 
uh, used that virtual integration as they did the design of the telescope, as they moved down the left-hand side of the V. And so they got a lot of benefit from that. And similarly, they were able to validate the telescope level requirements. As, you know, this was focused on the alignment and phasing system, but they actually had models that went all the way up to the telescope level and even to their mission level. So they could look at the operational scenarios for the overall telescope and validate that they had the right requirements by, by using the model to help them in that validation process and see that the behavior supported the operational scenarios that they had laid out. And the use of this model to support the impact assessment, such as the change that I just walked through. And that's a current uh, analysis that's underway as we speak. So in addition, uh, if you're interested in following up on more detail on this 30 meter telescope project. There's a list of references here that can give you all kinds of details on the project itself. Uh, on the, you can even see the TMT system model. Uh, it's a fairly large model. You can dig into it and see the, the details of that model. Uh, it's shown as a case study in the system engineering body of knowledge, uh, which is a primary source of systems engineering um, knowledge, if you will, uh, that's available to you. And there's uh, a few different papers. One of, one of them is listed here on the ESIM method, this executable systems engineering method uh, by Robert Carbon and uh, uh, Herzog and Deakins and Alizar and, uh, and others. So uh, please take a look at, at this if you're, if you're interested. Uh, just an acknowledgement statement that I, I want to definitely include this. That we, we thank the TMT project for providing these slides, and they acknowledge that they're, they're collaborating institutions that I mentioned earlier uh, for their contribution to this project. Again, uh, the uh, project does not endorse any particular tool, so uh, these slides use a particular tool, but they don't endorse a particular tool.